This is about four soldiers uh, and writers, uh, their views on Vietnam and the war. I don't want to think about Vietnam. I don't think there's any value in that. But I came upon, completely by accident, a story, The Fragging, by Larry Heineman. That put it before me in all its tawdry raiment. And then I watched a movie, The Post, and there it was again. I got a book about four writers connected to that war because I wanted to learn a little bit more about Larry Heineman. I'd never heard of him before I read his story. In a sense, it doesn't matter who he is. I had the story, but I was curious. Anyway, I got that book, and here are some thoughts about that war from those four authors. And when I'm done with this, if luck is with me, I don't want to think about it anymore. Philip Caputo. About my experience, it illustrates how you can become something you never thought you would become without being aware of the transformation. There is evil in you, or violence, or both, which you're not fully aware of, and that it can sneak up and in effect possess you or snatch your soul. I didn't think the war was right, and I thought the war was, at that point, was certainly pointless, but only those who had been there had the true moral right to protest the war. How did it wound me? First of all, at a very young age, having your friends killed. I knew 16 guys over there who were killed in action. Then there's the sense of having failed myself in some way, failed an ideal, both an objective ideal and an ideal I had of myself. And then just having to look into your own soul and perhaps not exactly like what you see. Larry Heineman. I never encountered so many stupid people in one place in all my life. It about irked me to distraction to have to kowtow to people that I understood were not my betters. Some lifer, it seemed, was always fucking with us. Chicken shit harassment. My first job in Vietnam was burning shit. Welcome to Vietnam, bub. And of course, it only went downhill from there. The other thing that was clear, and became clearer as I went along, whatever it takes, cousin, Whatever I have to do to get out of here in one piece. You wind up giving up almost every good thing you ever thought about yourself. And you don't just give it up. It's taken from you, boiled away, torn away. And the hardest part of that process is that afterward, you don't always get it back. All we were doing was wrecking people's lives, wrecking the countryside. What's the famous quote? We had to destroy the village in order to save it. We were not fun to be around, and we took it out on the Vietnamese. I must say, to my great shame. Drugs, mostly pot, the goal was to be numb, and the further you got into your tour, the more earnest was that desire. This has everything to do with the growing sense in you that you just didn't care anymore. That led to all kinds of self-destructive behavior. When I got out, I was 25 pounds lighter, lean and solid. The 1,000 meter stare and wrapped pretty tight. And bitter. That's what soldiers' work will do for you. I think I outlasted my brothers because I didn't own a gun. I got married right away. Edie, my wife, saved my life more than once. And writing was important because it focused my intensity outward, not in. Let's talk about Vietnam and the war, unsullied by sentimentality. What it is to be an ordinary soldier in a democratic army, and what it means to a democracy when a war comes along that is based on a lie. Tim O'Brien I'm, much more cyn I'm a much more cynical person than I was. It's not that I didn't think politicians would lie. I knew they would and did. I just didn't know the scope of it until the Vietnam experience. 
the breathtaking, stupefying, ballsy way in which deceit is carried out. I'll be damned if I'm going to lie about myself. I did the wrong thing. I shouldn't have taken part in that war, given what I believed. In my case, I committed an act of unpardonable cowardice and evil. I went to a war that I believed was wrong, and I actively participated in it. I pulled the trigger. I was there. And by being there, I was guilty. Robert Olin Butler I did not have to confront the evil that resides in my soul, as it does in every human soul. For me, it was the antithesis of that. Vietnam helped open up my capacity to love people, as opposed to opening up a glimpse into my capacity to hate and destroy. That is the hand I was dealt. If I have any guilt, it is because I know some of my good pals didn't get the kind of luck I got. They did not get dealt the right hand and had to confront things in themselves that were really tough. I was a lucky man, a very lucky and blessed man.